This revolutionary adaptation, that's, some, that's what this model represents. You could say, well, this is an image of the hero from the mythological perspective. Say, well, you may identify with that figure even if you don't know you're doing it, which is to say that he, when you're here, you may say to yourself, well, it's possible that if I pay attention, better things will come about. Well, in a sense, that's what you're doing, whether you know it or not, is identifying with the capacity to undergo this process. So. And then you'd say, well, even when you're in chaos, you still have a story. Well, that's true, you do, but you don't have to. Like people, this is, this is the problem with notions like Joseph Campbell, for example, most New Age philosophy. They say, well, you know, follow your interests. Well, there's a lot of anomaly wherever your interests take you. That's perfectly fine. They say, follow your interest and you'll get to here. Well, that's a load of, that's a, a, what would you say? A very oversimplistic and naive conception of development because if you follow your interest and you hit a big anomaly, which you will, you'll end up here. And this is the this is by definition the most unpleasant place that you can imagine to be. And so it isn't just a matter of, well, things are pretty damn good now, and if you're just real good, they'll get a lot better. It's well, things are, you know, however they are right now. I don't know how that, that each person determines that personally. And if you do what you should do, they're gonna get a lot worse before they get better. So that's, that's part of it, because you need an explanation, you know? It's like, why don't people do this? Why don't people pay attention to anomalous information when it doesn't take that much cognitive work to realize that if you ignore something that's real, sooner or later it's going to cause you trouble. Well, why do people ignore it then? There must be a reason. Because some interpretation is better than none. Right? That's even for fault, sure. Even a bad one. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, that explains a lot of the persistence of forms of psychopathology. It's like you say, well, you know, you, someone has someone has a real cockeyed story, and it's obvious to them that it's cockeyed because their story transforms almost everything into the determinant significances of anxiety and pain. But they'll still hang on to that, like like a lifeline, when you offer them an alternative story that would allow the motivational states of hope and satisfaction to emerge because even though this is terrible, this is worse. And to get to the new one, they'd have to go there. Right. Isn't that also though because they're not being a hero?